Hi, my name is Devin, and today I'm going to be messing around in the physics asset editor and getting our animated meshes to react to physics. So let's get started. Click on the import button and open up your FBX. Make sure it's a skeletal mesh and that import animations is checked. Also, if you're using Blender or Maya, you might need to check this button, uh, or else your animation might come in facing the wrong axis. So after you've checked all those boxes, hit OK, and you should have your skeletal mesh and your anim set. This is my animation. It's a simple little tentacle thing that moves back and forth really slowly. But I want to make him react to physics. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to right click on my skeletal mesh, create new physics asset, name it whatever you want, hit OK and then open it up. When you open it up, uh, your collision boxes will be a little screwy, so to fix them, uh, just click on these buttons or hit W, E, and R to switch between move, rotate, and scale, and just get your collision boxes looking however you want them to look. Another thing that you can do is click on this button, which will help you visualize better what you're actually editing. Um, for the collision boxes. And then you can also click on this button to switch between a solid mesh, a wireframe mesh, or no mesh. So go ahead and edit your collision boxes to be how you want. After you've done that, uh, hit the S button to simulate the physics. And as you can see, it just falls to the ground in a very awkward way. That's what happens when it reacts to purely ragdoll physics and no animations. So let's go ahead and put our action in. Go over to your content browser, select your anim set, and plug it in there. Also, check this blend on poke. Now, when you simulate physics, nothing happens. What you gotta do now is go up into this corner and select the animation that you wanna play. Select it and hit the play button. So now he starts to animate. But, if you shift and left click, he will also react to physics. And then he'll go back to his animation. Now as you can see, uh, he's kind of twisting in a really weird way that I don't want him to. So how I can fix that is I can add constraints. I'm going to hit S to stop the simulation. And then now I'm going to go up into the upper left corner and hit click on this B button, which is edit mode. And you should see your mesh has disappeared and you've got these pink crosses. Um, go ahead and select one of the crosses, either from the, the tree view or the actual viewport. Um, so this shows you the relationship between the two bones that are connected to each other. Now I wanted him to be limited in his angular swing so he won't twist around in a really weird way. So to do that, check the swing limited button. Nothing happens. That's because we also have to add in an angle. So I'm going to say 30 degrees. And now you should see this little green shape Oops. that will show you where he is allowed to rotate. If you wanted it to be like give him a little more uh, of a sweep you can also play with the other radius so now he has a three-dimensional radius in which he's allowed to rotate but I just want to keep him in the one or the two-dimensional so I'm gonna repeat that for all the bones give them 30 degrees angular limit I'm going to get out of edit mode and simulate. Play the animation. So now when I click him, he's not twisting in that weird way anymore. It looks a lot more natural. 
Although there is still a little bit of finessing that I could do, it looks a lot better. Uh, one of the finessing things that I'm talking about is you could change this poke blend time. If you make it really small, he'll uh, he'll go back to the animation really quickly. But if you make it much larger, it'll take him a lot more time to switch back to the animation from the physics. So you don't want to make it too long or too short or else it'll look unnatural. I'm going to go ahead and put this at one second. So that... Yeah, I think that looks a little better. So anyway, that's about it. You just uh, play with all those settings and play with the constraints and you've got some weird animating mesh that reacts to physics. Thanks for watching.